Today I'm going to show you how to take one of these six cell boards that are for 2.7 volt super caps and convert it into five cells for three volt super caps. So this way we can make a string of uh, 15 volts. So let's get down to the bench and get going. So today we're going to be taking five supercapacitors, the Amperix 400 farad three volt supercapacitors, a six cell protection board and we're going to be modifying this for five cell because this right now is met for six cells at 2.7 volts we need to make it five cells at three volts each and we also have my custom little made sab mosfet board for balancing and that will turn into this right here we now have five cells five as in here and also the connections the wire connections below for the balancing and this makes one nice little 15 volt stack so let's get started okay i have it mounted in this nice little holding jig here so this way we can work on it and if you flip it on over you'll see this side is vcc and this side is ground well we're going to be cutting right here eventually and get rid of the six cell and this will end up becoming the negative right here so we'll have to uncover some of the solder mask on the top side, what we have to do, first off, is remove these two current resistors because that's going to be right where we cut, and you might as well save them for some other day. So I'll be doing that in a minute. Plus, we need to change all these circuits from 2.7 volts. Actually, they activate at 2.65 for the 2.7 volt version, and we're going to change them to 2.95 for the 3 volt version supercapacitors and the only thing we have to do is this little resistor right here is a 12 kilo ohm we have to pull them all off and replace them with 33 kilo ohm resistors and that will change the circuit so this way it doesn't activate until 2.95 volts so let's go ahead and do that Okay, let's put a little bit of flux on those two spots. Actually, I don't even need to do this one because we're cutting it off. One, two, three, four, five. And let's add some solder to those little pad areas. And then we'll put the resistors on. Okay, let's touch them one more time. Now we add solder. This will help the resistor actually stick to it a little bit more. And now we'll use hot air to reseat these. See it go right on down. Okay, now that we have the resistors replaced and these two current limiting resistors out of the way, now we're going to cut it and change it from a 6-cell board to a 5-cell board. And we're going to remove the one over here on the ground side. So if we flip it on over, and you'll see where I removed these two chips at, flip it on over, we're going to cut right here, right next to this copper port, because this copper port is now going to become our negative. So let's go ahead and make that cut. And there we go. Now it's made for five cells. The next thing we need to do is um, clean up this mess. Okay, so the next thing we gotta do, depending upon which way you want it to connect, because unfortunately you kind of lose your nice big mounting hole over here. When I get five of these done, I'm going to be running a big thick copper bus bar across. Now you could run them over the top if you wanted to, or you can run them over the bottom. I'm personally gonna do them over the bottom. So I need to move, remove the solder mask from this side right here and this side right here in preparation for doing that. Plus we need to make five little spots on each and every single one of these so this way we can connect the uh, balance board, the SAB MOSFET board to each and every single one of these 
copper pores because it needs every single one. So we're going to clean a little section as well. And the easiest way again for me was to use a Dremel and I'm just using one of these little flimsy paper, very fine sanders. Just enough to touch it and slowly wear away the solder mask without really taking any of the copper off. So let's get that started. So there we go. We got my two bus bars and my six connections I'm going to need. One, two, three, four, five, six connections that I'm going to need for the balancing circuit. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, so I'm putting an angled header on my little MOSFET board here. This way it's easier to put wires onto because my holes are too small. And there's only six of them populated, not the seventh one, because this board was originally designed for a six cell series. We're just going to short out that last hole with the bottom and put them both to the ground, and that makes it compatible with uh, five cells instead of six cells. There we go. See, they're nicely shorted out. Okay, so I got my nice little right angle connector put on there and my six wires, so this way it's nice and firm. And I got six wires coming out, pre-tinned. Now what we're going to do is take a little bit of this electrically insulative, sticky, goopy stuff and just protect these leads. So let's fold this over a little bit. Let's wrap it around and squeeze it around. Make sure it gets in there. This way it electrically isolates everything. And less chances of a short. And there we go. So now we're gonna go and zoom out and connect to our board. So on here, that is pin one. Nice little notch right there, which is positive. And here's the positive of the board. So let's flip this on over. So we need to flip this upside down like this because this is positive. And we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six to make our connections. So let's uh, give these a little bit of a wetting. Let's start connecting. Nicely connected. <clears throat> and there we go. All connected and good to go. So let's move on to the next step. Now if we look at the top of an Amperx capacitor, the positive has a smooth top, and the negative has this waffle print on the actual pin that goes in. And that's how you tell positive and negative. So smooth is positive. Here's our positive on our board. Let's fit them on here. There we go. All five of them basically fit. So let's tack them on down now. And yes, I use this a lot for cheating.
Okay, they're all now tacked into place. Now, since we're gonna flood these, just like we did on this one, let me bring it on over here real quick. And you see we flood these connections over top with a ton of solder. And the reason being is, sorry, that is a nice thick trace, but that's not gonna carry 90 or 100 amps without burning out. So we need to give it some extra conductivity by way of putting a ton of solder on top of it to allow 90 amps of current to pass between each cell much more easily. So I was originally soldering with this little tip right here. That's not going to do it. You need to put a lot of heat into this. So I put a nice really big thick tip on here and crank the temperature up to 400 degrees Celsius. This way we can heat it as fast as possible and keep from transferring too much heat down into the capacitors and damaging them. So let's get started. There's the first part done. After you're all done this, we will need to clean off all the um, extra flux that's sitting everywhere. And there we go. Fully soldered. I just gotta clean all that flux off now, so I gotta let it cool down. Okay, so now I got the board all cleaned off, nice and pretty. I also put some tape on the back of it, so this way we can hold this down. And just so you know, yes, here's the other string. So, we're still working with the new string. So, let's check the voltages now that we've cleaned it up. And we are at 14.76 volts, and everything is protected. So... 2.945, and 2.968. Not bad. They're all protected. So here we have a completed strap. And of course, the second I take them off, they're done being protected. So, now I have two of them made up. Need to make up three more of these. So there you go. Now I got two strings so far. I need to make three more of them, and then we're gonna do a video switching them from strings into a supercapacitor array. We're gonna parallel all of them. So this way we get all that extra amperage, and we can spread it out over all five strings instead of just putting one string. This will probably start a car right now, but you're putting a lot of load on just these little super caps. It's best to spread it out. So look for that video. Thumbs up, please. Share it wherever you can. Thanks for watching.